Next, we'll be introducing Chris. Chris Poor is the API integrations product manager at Cummins. Hey, Chris. Hey, good afternoon. Good morning, all. Thank you again for joining. We're definitely looking forward to you talking about the requirements driven for API development. Yep, thanks for the tee up and uh, happy to participate. Uh, glad to contribute to today's discussion. Awesome, thank you. Great, so uh, I, you know, quick introduction uh, about myself. Uh, based out of the Midwest here, calling in today. Uh, Cummins, uh, I'm, I'm coming at uh, today's talk from a little different perspective. I know that there are a lot of API first leaders listening today. Uh, those of you uh, aspiring to kind of evolve um, how you're uh, conceiving, developing, deploying APIs within your organization or out to your, your end customers, whether those be developers or uh, application teams inside your organization. Um, I come at this problem space from the mindset of supporting what is actually a hundred year old enterprise. Cummins has been making uh, physical products like it, truck engines and generators and uh, standby power systems uh, spanning the globe for a number of years. And so um, it's a very complex problem. I'm going to talk a little bit about that today. But no matter the size of the organization you find yourself in, I think there's some commonality to um, and, and a risk to anything you would build. And this, I think this actually applies to not only just APIs, but also just applications. Um, very often requirements come in the flavor of, you know, uh, they presume that each of us that, as a developers and architects and, um, that we're a short order cook, that we're, we're gonna build what they ask us to build. And so, you know, if it's on the menu, great. We, we cook it up, we deliver it, they consume it and they go away satisfied. Um, I, I'll challenge that that mentality to say that uh, often the last the last thing a customer or a partner is looking for is for you to fulfill just what they're asking you for. Okay, there's a large gap between a customer that goes away satisfied with the capabilities of the API you've delivered and what they're asked for. Okay, um, and so that's I'll talk about a couple facets of this problem space. And, and how do you escape it? How do you mature above just building what you're being asked to build and actually building the highest value API that your customers, your API consumers, your application developers, and the market you serve can find the most value in? Um, so uh, let me transition slides here and uh, we'll, we'll jump right in. So, uh, you know, a... Uh, Little analogy for API development. I don't know the age range of those participants that are on today's sessions, but this is this is four generations of uh, 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 Nintendo culture, or what is was known as Super Mario Brothers over the years. Okay, and 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 there's a little bit of humor in why I'm sharing this. Okay, um, one of those reasons is you know an analogy for API development. We're digital plumbers. It's how business gets done. We bring internal and external resources to applications and teams that need that data. Um, we house information, uh, those resources. We architect, test, and deploy highly integrated systems for delivering information. And we also clean up loose ends. There's a dirty side to, to you know, managing data and archiving data, which may no longer be useful, or protecting data that maybe shouldn't be you know, cut loose in the hands of all of your API consumers. And then sometimes, just sometimes, we appear to have superpowers, okay? And so I wanna to talk today about how do you take, you know, the development you're prioritizing today and fulfilling requirements, but how do you come to be viewed as a partner within your organization and within your market that has superpowers for finding the most value through your API development um, backlog and, and through your roadmap, because at the end of the day, you, you have to know where you're going. You have to be able to communicate that to your customers. So let's talk about how we can we can kind of level up our game, so to speak, and, and reach that point where we can identify a magic mushroom that almost makes us invincible and we can deliver the most value to API consumers that we support on a, on a day to day or week to week basis. Now, the reality of API development is, is that we oftentimes, and I, this is how I feel, and I imagine many others of you out there feel like you're being pursued. <laughs> you're being chased down with an onslaught of evolving requirements 
from countless stakeholders, application developers, and, and customers that are consuming your APIs. Um, the, there is, it's job security I, you know, from some perspectives, but it's not a healthy position to feel to be in where you're constantly being pursued by an overwhelming amount of requirements. Okay, and so I, what I hope to do today is give you some suggestions on how you reframe being chased and pursued with more requirements than you have the resources to fulfill and actually level up to steering conversation, the, the conversation around requirements and your roadmap to the highest value areas that, that leave customers feeling more than satisfied with what you've built and deployed for them. Um, kind of dictating your own pace. If, if there's any runners out there, you have to know your pace and go your pace and you know what your re resources are capable of and you're always striving to do more with less. That's just a, a reality of business today. So, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll speak to this from both uh, the perspective of being a technically minded product leader, um, but really focusing on the pursuit of valuable problems. You know, my, my exponentially larger dominoes here in this this slide are you know my i'll i'll suggest that there's a premise in my talk that many of the requirements that are brought to you are are brought with a smaller degree of value in mind right and sometimes some would call that incremental development you know we start small we ship something that's minimally viable that that an api consumer a developer can consume and then we seek to evolve and enhance and grow the capabilities of that that set of mechanisms. So um, you, we always need to be in the pursuit of the largest and most valuable problems for our business, okay? Simply put, that, that helps us level up our game toward that, that concept of becoming uh, a little more of a superhero. So where's the larger value hiding? A um, little more about my background is, you know, as a, my role at Cummins and before Cummins, I found myself, uh, consulting and working in the, the software product space, often interfacing with Fortune 1000 organizations. And there's a realm of what it would, could be, what are often described as wicked problems. Um, I'll talk a little more about this, but these there are senior leaders that are constantly in, in their own battle of prioritizing the highest value capabilities across what is often a very siloed organization. They, they didn't get to become the for, part of the Fortune 1000, without splintering off multiple departments, multiple hierarchies, multiple escalation processes. And the day-to-day the -day is it can seem somewhat contentious as to who owns the data and the process aspects of the business. Here we are as API developers trying to stitch all these disparate processes and data sources together in a way that, that can build and evolve an API portfolio, right? It, it starts with one API, it starts with a set of limited set of resources, and then it quickly grows to, to become a portfolio, at least with regards to larger organizations, right? There's no such thing as a, a single purpose API um, within these organizations. So where's, again, let's focus on where that larger value is hiding and how do we reframe the conversation from the list of requirements that, that one of these senior stakeholders may have brought us to help them win the next deal or to uh, onboard a new set of application developers that have a new set of needs for uh, data that your API might be able to unlock. Now, the, the wicked problem definition is something for us to all keep in mind. Um, wicked problem being something it's, it's difficult or nearly impossible to solve. I won't say impossible to solve, but nearly impossible because the requirements are ever changing. They're, they're rarely complete when they come to us. <laughs> um, I don't know if anybody else feels the same, but, but how many times does somebody bring you a fully designed, well thought out, well considered data model, end-to-end um, -end design that you can just put in the hands of your, your teams and go out and build and deploy, and it's just successful from the start. I, I, I can't remember a program that came to, came to me that way, okay? Now, the requirements, are often difficult to recognize. I want to talk a little bit about why. Why are the requirements difficult to recognize um, in the greater greater scheme of things? A lot of reason why requirements uh, become an anchor because they kind of suck us down into low level discussions is because the requirements come across in the form of you know uh, work that hit 
how we build what we build, a product backlog. Um, low level requirements hit our backlog and, and they look like they, they come in the form of kind of as if we were a short order cook that we can go simply fulfill those. And by fulfilling those requirements to the spec that maybe we were provided, no matter how complete, that the job will be done and we'll move on to the next, um, next priority in our backlog. Now, if, you're, if you've got good partners, then you're getting equal amounts, if not more, understanding around the why. And there's a big difference between a backlog and a roadmap. And that's why I'm highlighting this slide here. Um, the why of an API consumer, why do they need a certain data set? What is their use case? What's the business value they're hoping to deliver? These are roadmap questions. Um, a product backlog is how, but, but a product roadmap is more about why, and it's very rooted in the problem, okay? Product backlogs typically center on the solution. And the quicker we can come to that realization when new requirements come to us, are we getting the full context? Are we getting the full context of the problem that our customer, whether API consumer or producer, okay, of, of a particular data set, um, why are they having these challenges? What are the underlying challenges in the data model? What are the underlying challenges with scalability and access to information? Um, what's the security landscape, right? And, and why is that part of the problem space or not part of the problem space? So um, there, there's a, a dichotomy here between the why and the how. Um, I would venture to say that many of the requirements that come to each of us come in the form of, especially in large organizations, they come in the form of how, how they would like us to deliver the information. They might bring us an exhaustive list of low level data fields or data attributes uh, and, and some, some primitive within that, you know, that uh, I, I wanna be able to broker customer orders or I wanna be able to provide shipment status or I wanna know uh, what the billing looks like uh, for a particular uh, product space or a product portfolio. The quicker we can get a deeper understanding of why, the better solutions we can bring to bear for our customers is, is really the point that I want to impress on everybody here. So, you know, would you prefer, ask yourself the question, would you prefer to be told how you should build an interface? How do you build the best sandwich? Okay, how do you build that uh, awesome Saturday morning breakfast that uh, anyone that would join you at the table feels like, man, I just, I feel like I got everything I needed and, this was really well thought through, and I, I want to go back to this team because they're they're delivering the most value. When I actually only asked for a sandwich, I only asked for a stack of pancakes. So I'm 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 full of food analogies here. So um, it's one of the one of the things that just kind of comes with the territory to try and abstract some of these concepts. Now, one of the ways we approach this problem uh, at Cummins is, you know, we, there's always uh, requirements that come across uh, the, our integration teams, of which uh, I have se we have several teams spanning the globe, uh, supporting multiple different work streams, multiple different business units. But there's a locus of control of a particular data set or a particular work stream. And the requirements come in, you know, what you might call the bullseye of these concentric circles. and and job well done is assumed that if we hit the bullseye and we deliver on the requirements as they were shared with us, we'll be successful. But rarely do those requirements exist in isolation. I've, I would venture to say that every set of requirements can be wrapped in a set of concentric circles, overlapping needs for the data that uh, are contained in those set of requirements, additional use cases. Um, looking more outward facing. Maybe there's you know three uh, industry partners that are all looking for a deep integration with your particular application stack and, and those strategic partnerships are deemed as the priority for your business today. They've been prioritized by leadership. And maybe that's only you know two, two circles uh, removed from the bullseye. But there's also larger market forces at play. There's, there, you know, just because you've got three partners that are ready to consume that API, are there actually 12 or 15 more or 20 more potential API consumers that, that the business isn't aware of? Many of you have been focusing on API first development and putting and using API development as a product led growth strategy and really starting at the periphery 
of what's possible with your API and unlocking as many developers and as many consumers of your API as possible. So some of you are already drawing this, the wider set of circles around the, the type of development that you can take up and prioritize. And, and props to that because it's a different set of challenges from the requirements driven development that those of us in enterprise organizations um, are challenged by, right? It, we, we long for the day that we could focus on that outward market aspect of how, how easy can we make it to order for a trucking company to order an engine and manage power generation and uh, re, you know, redundant energy sources uh, by which they operate their business. These are examples obviously specific to Cummins, but the, the same thing applies that the language of that API is a modern language that, that how business is being done. And we want to put our API in the hands of as many consumers as would find value in it. So challenging yourself to look beyond the, the, the crystallized requirements that have been brought to you and expanding that set of concentric circles out to a, broad, a broader audience, thinking about how your API would scale to, to meet a variety of needs um, is, is time well spent. And it will seem at odds with the, the tyranny of the urgent deliver these requirements and do it as fast as your your resources will allow but sometimes you have to slow down to speed up a little bit so kind of transitioning forward you know the we find that there are as we expand those concentric circles many times the api is is being driven by um, a producer an owner uh, of a particular data set Cummins exam one Cummins example is warranty data. We've got some of the longest lasting, toughest industrial products in the market that move heavy machines and trains and, and power uh, refrigeration equipment and pharmaceuticals. And I could, the list goes on. So there's a, a deep set of inherent data within an organization as large as Cummins. So those would be the, on the producer side. And some of those data owners know the value of the data that that they house. They've, they've got deep investments in the engineering of some of those assets. Um, but they don't often realize that consumers would find equivalent value in them, right? That there, there is day-to-day -day value for potential API consumers, like a maintenance technician. He wants to know the simplest way to, main, to maintain the service intervals uh, of a particular product, that, uh, industrial product that Cummins might be shipping. And if he can do that, whether it's through a web app or modern, any modern application or through a third party application that knows all about Cummins physical products and how to service them and what parts are needed, and, uh, renewable resources. So this the dichotomy of a consumer versus producer um, value, we always have to challenge to think beyond just what's being brought to us. If, Thank you, Chris, for your presentation. We appreciate it. Yep, absolutely. Thanks for the time today. Appreciate uh, being part of the conversation.